Hi, my name is Jonas and you'll be learning how to integrate with MagicBlock with a simple Anchor counter example. You want to use Anchor for three main reasons. Number one, you have to write less code, deserialization, serialization is taken care of, so you have a faster development process. Number two, you want to benefit from Anchor security features such as account validation. Number three, you want to be faster with testing using IDLs. Let's dive into the Anchor example. Before we dive into the counter program, let's have a look at this web app where we interact with the counter program on chain. The program is on DevNet. I'm connected with my wallet. I have created and initialized this counter account with the state 775. I can increment, takes roughly a second. I can delegate and change the owner to the delegation program, making it available on the firmware rollup. With the first transaction, I clone and increment. You can see it's so much faster. I can undelegate, bring it back to DevNet, change the owner to the original program. Here again, it's a bit slower. I delegate, it's so much faster. That's the power of Magic Block. Let's take a dip. This is the repository of Magic Block examples with uh, several versions of the counter program. So let's go through the anchor counter. The counter program is located under programs, anchor counter, source lib.rs, while the tests are located under tests and anchor counter tests. The dependencies of the program can be found under cargo.toml. Here we have mainly anchor lang and ephemeral rollup SDK. And the dependencies for our tests can be found under package.json. Here we have anchor and also ephemeral rollup SDK. Let's take a dip into our program in our lib.rs file. Here we have mainly four imports. Number one, we have anchor lang which is required for any program utilizing Anchor. And then we have three other modules from the firmware rollup SDK provided by MagicBlock. Here we have number one, Anchor, where we utilize commit, delegate, and ephemeral. These are three macros to help us easily integrate MagicBlock into any Anchor program. And then we have um, CPI, where we utilize delegate config to delegate accounts from Solana to ephemeral rollup. And here we set the config uh, the automatic commit frequency from the firmware up to Solana and the validator. And then number three, we have FM. These are functions that make CPI calls on the firmware rollup to either commit or commit and undelegate accounts. Next, we have declare ID, which defines the public key of the program. We need to make sure that it's the same one as we find it in our target deploy folder. Once we build it, this key pair will be generated and the key pair's public key needs to be the same as the program's public key. So we need to copy it and rebuild before we de can deploy the program. Then we have the test PDA, which is the seed of uh, the counter account that we use uh, to derive the address for it. With the anchor dependency, we can make use of macros that help us to easily write Solana programs. Number one, we have the program macro that allows us to use functions to define instructions and its logic. Number two, we have derive accounts, where we set the context of each instruction, which accounts are required and what the logic is. And then number three, we have the account macro, where we set the template for the states of the program for deserialization and serialization. Before we go into the delegation, let's have a look at the basic functionality of this anchor counter. We have here two instructions, initialize, uh, where we set the counter count dot count to zero and lock the value. And we utilize the context initialize where we require for this instruction three accounts, uh, the counter, which is initialized if it's not created. If not, it will be skipped. The payer for this account is the user here. And uh, this account has the space eight plus eight bytes, which is one for the discriminator and the other one is for the value of count and the account address is derived deterministically through the seeds, test PDA and the bump. Then we have the user account, which basically pays for the, um, for the fees and that's why it's mutable. And in the system program, in order to create a counter account, if it's not initialized yet, we require this program. For the second instruction, we have increment. Here we take the counter account dot count and increment by one. And then if it exceeds 1000, it will be set to zero. And then we lock the value of it. Here we utilize increment, 
context and here we require one counter account which is writable and uh, it seeds and it's bumped to determine the PDA deterministically. Yeah, this is the basic functionality of the program. And to add the capability of delegating, we have this instruction delegate, which utilizes in the account the function delegate PDA, which takes in the payer, the seeds of the PDA, and the configuration for delegating. To make a CPI call to the delegation program, to transfer the owner from um, the original program to this, from this program of the PDA to the delegation program and therefore delegating it. This function comes through the context delegate input and it comes through this macro delegate which basically adds the accounts required and the function to delegate beyond the payer and the PDA to delegate. So that's how easy it is to actually delegate any account through Anchor. After delegating the account, we then can invoke the instructions initialize and increment to make uh, real-time state transitions on the firmware rollup. And on demand, we can commit the states from the firmware rollup to Solana through this instruction commit that has this function commit accounts that comes from the firmware rollup SDK commit accounts. And it takes in the payer, the counter that we want or the PDA that we want to commit, the magic context and the program. And you can see it's a list so we can commit multiple accounts at once. Um, this will make a CPI call to the magic box program on the firmware rollup to create a schedule to commit. So this whole instruction is executed on the firmware rollup. It takes in the context here, which has the payer and the counter as account inputs, both mutable. And with this commit macro, we basically expand the list of accounts with the other accounts that is required for this instruction, which is the magic context and the magic program. Yeah, and that's how easy it is for you to commit. Uh, for undelegate, it's the same. Here we have this function commit and undelegate uh, accounts, which comes also from the same uh, firmware rollup SDK module FM to make a CPI call to the magic block program on the firmware rollup, also only executed on the firmware rollup to also not only create a schedule for committing, but also transferring the ownership from the delegation program to the origin program on Solana. Yeah, and last but not least, we have this ephemeral macro, which is imported through the ephemeral rollup SDK anchor. Uh, this allows the program to undelegate on Solana after being committed or undelegated on the ephemeral rollup. It will insert a new instruction and function here inside the program to allow the validator to call this instruction to transfer the ownership and recreate the PDA with the latest date from the firmware rollup. And that's how easy it is. You can delegate and undelegate with Anchor. And as a bonus, I want to show you two examples how you can atomically change the state on the firmware rollup and commit or undelegate. We have here two instructions, increment and commit and increment and undelegate, where we increase the counter by one, log it, and utilize the CPI call commit accounts or commit and undelegate account to schedule a commit or undelegation. They both take in the same context, increment and commit. Now let's build and deploy the Anchor counter program on Solana. We wanna deploy it on DevNet, so we're gonna check first whether we are on DevNet. Yes, we are. We want to check also whether we will have enough balance to deploy. Yeah, that's more than enough. And we build it through anchor build. It has been already built before, so we can find here the target folder. And then we can do anchor deploy. And we can deploy the program. It takes a while. It sends some transactions to create the buffer accounts, and now it's deployed. Awesome. Let's take a look into our tests under anchorcounter.ts. We have a few dependencies. We have anchor, we have program from anchor, and we have this anchor counter, which is generated when we build the anchor program. It's located under target types anchorcounter.ts, and it is the IDL file of the program, which helps us to easily interact with the, our on-chain program with our client. It has the program ID and all the instructions of the program, including the discriminator and the context of accounts required. 
also has the states, which is here in this case the counter with the count with U64. Besides that, we have Lamport per soul and get commit signature from Magic Blocks Ephemeral Wallop SDK that help us to get the signature when we commit the states from the Ephemeral Wallop to Solana. Then we have our test PDA seed, which is used to derive the program derived address for our counter account. And we have the two tests that we are running. Let's go for the first one. We have anchor counter. We set the provider. The provider is derived from here. We have the cluster which is set to DevNet in our wallet that is used for paying fees. Then we also set another provider for the ephemeral rollup and we log it. We check the balance whether we have enough and then we set the program and apply the IDL file which is from anchor counter and we derive the program derived address with the seed and the program ID and we log them. Afterwards, we run a few tests. We initialize the counter, increase the counter, delegate the counter, we increase the counter on the firmware rollup, we commit the state, we increase the counter again on the firmware rollup, and we commit and undelegate the state from the firmware rollup to Solana. Then we have our second test where we increment and commit our counter account atomically. Similarly to our first test, we set the provider for the firmware rollup, also check the balance, set the program, and set the PDA before we run the test. Here we have initialized the counter, delegate the counter, and here increase the delegate counter and commit at the same time, as well as here increase the delegate counter and undelegate at the same time. Let's run the test and see what happens. We can run our test with anchor test, but since we have already built and um, deployed our program, we just use anchor test where we skip build, deploy, and the local validator. Let's have a look at the test results. We're connected on DevNet with our base layer. The firmware rollup is devnet.magicblock.app. This is our public key, this is our program ID, and this is the counter account PDA. Let's have a look at the performance difference. Initialize, increment, and delegate has around 700 to 1000 milliseconds of end-to-end -end latency. With our first transaction on the firmware rollup increment, we have around 173, which is around five times faster. Then subsequently our commit is 67 milliseconds. This is around at least 10 times faster. It takes us 120 milliseconds to observe the latest date from the firmware rollup on Solana. And then subsequently the latency is around 40 milliseconds, 50 milliseconds. So in total at least almost 20 times faster. Then on our second suite of tests, we have here 600 and 670 milliseconds to initialize and delegate. The first increment and commit transaction on ephemeral rollup takes us 100 milliseconds. It takes us 59 milliseconds to observe on the base layer on the next block. And the subsequent transactions on the ephemeral rollup are 51 milliseconds. So it's at least 10, 12 times faster. So that's the power of magic block. Let's see how we can accelerate our program even faster to sub 10 milliseconds. Here we need to install our local firmware validator. We can check out the readme to install it with this command npm install. I have already installed it so it should be quite fast. We can then run the firmware validator on our local host through this command and connect it to DevNet. Here it says on port 8899. We can run the test scripts through this command here by setting the provider endpoint to localhost 8899. And here we go. We are connected with our firmware rollup roll on 8899. And the tests are running. On the base layer, we have 6,000 milliseconds of latency, 700 milliseconds. And on the firmware rollup, we have 6 milliseconds, 9 milliseconds, and 10 milliseconds. So you can see it's around a thousand times faster in this case. And uh, we also notice that with the first increment transaction on the firmware rollup, it has 900 milliseconds because with the first transaction on the firmware rollup, the accounts are cloned from Solana to the firmware rollup. We can see it also on this side here. It's around 50 milliseconds. Yeah, so that's the power of Magic Block and how you can build real time applications with ephemeral rollups that are unstoppable and scalable. So let's have fun building it. Thank you for watching. 
Let us know if we can improve anything. Join our community at Discord at MagicBlock. See you there.